Well, this is uh, kind of cool. Uh, Fred at uh, Tech 53 in Montreal. And I had a long conversation. He's a massive, long time Mark I, Mark II VW um, enthusiast. Uh, he's an engineer in the aerospace industry and he owns a half dozen uh, Mark I's. And um, he eventually decided that all the four piston caliper solutions on the market were undersized and underperforming, They're putting uh, undue bias on the rear brake. So he custom developed a set of calipers with Willwood. So these are only available through Tech 53. And the big story here is different caliper design. It's not a radio caliper, and it's a larger caliper, and it has a much larger piston. So I have one and a quarter inch, 1.25 inch, and these are 1.625. So almost, uh, well, a full three eighths of an inch, larger diameter each. It adds up to 68% um, more piston area, which is 68% more clamping force. So significantly improving their front rear uh, bias. He also points out that people that use the uh, fourth generation uh, aluminum calipers in the rear run the risk of too much braking pressure in the rear, forcing you to fiddle around with proportioning valves like I have because um, they're 58 millimeter versus 56 for the um, earlier Scirocco style um, steel calipers. So as soon as you increase the area, the, you are increasing the clamping force and uh, changing the brake bias. So he very correctly pointed out that my problem was undersized front caliper pistons, oversized rear caliper pistons forced me to that really weird dual proportioning valve setup. And the problem with proportioning valves is you get a little bit of a delayed response. So when you're rapidly modulating brakes and settling the car on the racetrack, you're not always getting exactly what you want. Um, anyway, so I've purchased these. I'm going to install them. I have a set in the car. I'll show you back to back the different piston sizes. And um, they fit with about two and a half, three millimeters to spare with my current three millimeter um, uh, spacers in the car. So I'll show that in a sec. Okay, so this is the new ones, temporarily mounted. And then I'll just show you the old ones. I'll just pivot them around here. So there's the original piston diameter. Uh, will I hold? Stay. Uh, come on. Okay, <laughs> ready? I'll just actually maybe I'll go sideways the other way. All right. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding? It's just like night and day, huh? So little tiny ones, stick your head right through them. Dinner plate, large ones. So caliper is a little larger. Trying to get them on the same plane. A little bit larger, a little thicker maybe, but they fit under my snowflakes, so I'm not complaining. And I've mounted them, and they're good. So anyway, I'll go back to the computer in a second, and I'll talk to you a bit more about brake bias um, math. So again, slow. sorry for the screen flicker. Uh, here's a, my brake bias and brake, brake clamping force um, table that I've made, and I'm posting this online. There'll be a link to this. It shows that the stock GTI with the Scirocco rear disc conversion, what its brake bias is, its uh, front rear bias is um, 6238, which is pretty close to the 6337 um, uh, you know, stock uh, weight, front rear weight balance on the wheels. That's the that's the static weight. When the car pitches forward under hard braking, that'll bias more towards the front for the stock GTI. There, that's the reason why there's that rear trailing beam proportioning valve that adjusts the pressure reduction based on how much load there is in the rear tires. 
In my case, I was using the Willwood Parlight calipers with the 1.25 diameter pistons. And I only had a tiny amount of increase in front clamping force relative to the stock calipers just because the pistons, those four piston calipers are using, you know, they're small pistons, so they don't have a lot of clamping area. Uh, and I'm, I was aggravating the situation a little bit by having the fourth generation aluminum rear calipers, which are a little bit larger piston than the Scirocco, so I ended up with the same rear bias as the um, stock GTI, but um, I didn't have uh, the same, I had an aftermarket proportioning valve that wouldn't turn down quite enough, so I had to put a second proportioning valve in place. So you move to the Tech 53s with the massive piston calipers on the front, and you go from, you know, a basically double, 200% of the clamping force of the stock car versus, for me, 115%. So, huge increase in clamping force. Rear brake bias is down to 26% in my case. Would have been even lower if I'd used the Scirocco um, rears. And so, this is going to allow me to get rid of the second proportioning valve, uh, or at least leave it wide open and then turn the, the, the first one down a lot so that I um, don't have that delay that, that the, the, the proportioning valve gives you um, in the rear pressure buildup. So there's a lot of benefits to running the Tech 53s. One of them is for a given amount of brake, brake pedal pressure you are going to have um, far more clamping force so the, the car is just going to work better. It's going to especially with me with my big 25.4 millimeter master cylinder, it's going to effectively make that a much more livable um, feel, brake feel on the street. I like a stiff feel on the track for heel and towing, but on the street sometimes it's nicer to have a little less brake uh, pedal pressure. So I'll put all this together and give it a spin and see how it works in practice uh, very, very soon.